It's Wednesday, July 26, 2022. My name is Ashton Ellett, here with another installment of the Senate Staff Oral History Project, sponsored by the Richard B. Russell Library for Political Research and Studies at the University of Georgia. I'm here today in Guyton, Georgia, with former State Senator Eric Johnson. Mr. Johnson is Senior Vice President at Hussey Gay Bell, a multidiscipline design firm based in Savannah, where he has worked since 1986. He is also Senior Advisor for State Government Relations with McGuire Woods Consulting. And most recently, he has become Project Director of the Interstate 16 Corridor Joint Development Authority, responsible for the Hyundai Kia development here in the Savannah area. A native of New Orleans, Louisiana, graduate of Tulane University, two times over, Mr. Johnson served a total of 17 years in the Georgia General Assembly between 1992 and 2009, served a single term in the Georgia House of Representatives before the voters of Georgia's first district sent him to the state Senate in 1994, where he held the posts of Minority Whip, Minority Leader, and President Pro Tem. He resigned in 2009 to run for governor, and we're here today to discuss his work on the staff of United States Senator Mac Mattingly. Mr. Johnson, Eric, thank you so much for, for making the time this morning here in uh, this beautiful home, which I assume you, you designed yourself. Right. We did work on it. Yes. <laughs> so thank you so much, and we really do appreciate it. Um, I was wondering if we could start. Tell us about um, growing up in, in, in uh, New Orleans, in Louisiana, and, and you know, your, your education and how you made the transition from uh, Louisiana to Georgia. Okay. The, I was actually born in New Orleans when my, when my dad was at medical school at, at Tulane, but grew up in Shreveport, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. um, went to the same high school that Saxby Chamless went to. He was, we didn't know each other because he was older, but it, that's sure. a small world. Yeah. Small yeah. world. Um, and then back to Tulane for architecture school where I met my wife from Savannah. I got married still in college, did one year after graduating in Dallas, and then moved to Savannah in 1977. And you moved to Savannah to be closer to your, your, your wife's family? Or? Right. Yeah, Dallas was just, we didn't know anybody. It was a great, it was a great job, and she mm -hmm. ended up graduating from SMU, but we decided we just want rather be here than there. Okay, makes sense, makes sense. Hey, you, want, you wanted a little bit more humidity with your heat. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't like Dallas wasn't hot. <laughs> oh, yeah, it, it's quite hot. Um, so, so what's kept you in Savannah after all, you know, all these years? And, and still, you know, a lot of folks we interview move around a whole lot. What, I just love, Savannah's kind of a perfect size. It's big enough to have mm -hmm. amenities, and we're getting a new hockey theme, and a new arena and you got water and you you know you got family and and it's close enough to get to jacksonville atlanta charleston what you need so it's, it's just been kind of a right size mm -hmm. town tourism gives you a lot going on the port and the military and mm -hmm. so it's been fun well i mean this is jumping ahead but it seems like it's going to get a lot bigger it's, yeah it, <laughs> yeah the, it, it savannah's also been pretty much recession proof between tourism the port and the military you kind of right. have an underpinning here that sort of keeps you from going rock bottom. Well, if the traffic north past Garden City is any indication of the the state of the economy of the area, things are things are doing well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the port the port's the big engine. Of course, Gulfstream's doing well too. When, right. Uh, so, got a lot going on. Yeah. So, when did you first get interested in politics? Was that when you were in college? Did you grow up in a family that was? You know, followed politics or into my, politics? My family was moderate Republicans, uh, you know, but I didn't care about politics at all. But uh, when we moved back to Savannah, mm -hmm. um, my wife and Libby Kingston, they were, they were dating at the time but not married, mm -hmm. um, um, invited me to go to join a young Republican meeting. And I just went to, to meet people, you know, it wasn't even an ideological thing. And then, right. And then ended up um, ended up being president. It was a small group, maybe a dozen. This people. would have been mid late seventies. This, this would have I been seventy eight. Okay. Yeah, about okay. a year after we got here, met in the old Sun Trust uh, or Trust Company Bank boardroom at the time, and um, then I and it's one of those. Hey, are you going to be president? And I was ended up being president <laughs> in eighty, which is when Mattingly started right. running. So, so tell me, did you get involved? Is was that your introduction to Mac? Was was yeah? No, nope, nobody camp? thought he could win. None. This all the senior Republican people thought this typewriter salesman from <laughs> St. Simons wasn't going to be the six-term U.S. senator mm -hmm. with the 
you know, with a bridge named after his father, <laughs> or grandpa, I think it's his father. Yeah, well, it was. And yeah. um, so I just said, I want to, you know, I want to be involved, and and ended up being um, just having fun with, during the campaign of helping him and doing well, the St. Patrick's Day parade and stuff like okay. that. Okay, so we've we've got pictures in his 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 collection from those St. Patrick's Day parades. So I'm going to look around. I think it's my daughter waving from a car. In one oh, of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. hmm. We'll have to make a note on the. the well, that wouldn't have, that wouldn't have been the, that would have been the re-election campaign. So eighty six campaign. In, my kids were born in Reagan election years. I got all excited, you know. <laughs> so I can remember when they were born, eighty and eighty four. Okay, okay. So yeah, a little bit older than me, but not not much. Um, so what was your role on the Senate campaign or in the Senate campaign? I guess it, more just like a county chairman. I okay, mean, I was still, but that was still a so YR were president. Chatham, but Chatham I was here when, when he yeah when he needed a driver or needed somebody to find him a car for the parade or just squire him around. Because at that point I was young and not in the Savannah native, so it's not like I could network mm. many people, mm. but, but I would be with him when he went to fundraisers, which mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, was, it, was, it was just typical local campaign assistant. How would you describe uh, Mac back then? Was um, what was he like to be around? What was he like as a campaigner? He, he, he was he was a good campaigner, um, I, I, um, and of course the t the Republicans at the time you know were still skeptical of of his odds, but they we were just starting to grow. Mm -hmm. um, of course, Reagan was out what was out running running for president at right. the time, and that he turned the Republicans on. Um, so at, it, so he he worked crowd well and and the other one of the lessons I learned from him that I used throughout my political career was go back in the kitchen thank the thank the workers um, sit with your back to the to the wall so you can see people coming before they tap you on their shoulder and you can't don't know who they who they are uh, but really going I mean we would go to events for at the old DeSoto Hilton banquet mm -hmm. room and he'd go he really would go back and work the kitchen so he was that kind of campaign mm -hmm. that um, and I think part of that's his background you know you know you can joke about being a typewriter salesman he worked for IBM right <laughs> but but he so he had that retail background and he and he just just and he was upper middle class I guess you know yeah. Air Force guy mm -hmm. uh, IBM salespeople and so I think he connected better with people than right than the Hummin did <laughs> So you said, you know, you and others who got involved or just followed it, you, you didn't, you never expected him to win. So, so what, what were you doing you know, election night, elect, uh, post-election morning? Yeah, if I had expected was, him to win, I probably would have figured out how to get to Atlanta. <laughs> um, I, it was, so I didn't go up there and, re and remember Talmadge won. I mean, according to the AJC, it still has the headlines. Mm -hmm. And it, so it wasn't until I don't know six in the morning that yeah, Cobb, it was very that Cobb early County the next Wednesday. day uh, d uh, came through and they declared him the winner. And I was actually on an architectural project interview in Camden County in St. Mary's, mm -hmm. and somebody brought me a note. And I wish I had kept it. It said Max One M A X One, <laughs> and cause nobody could ever get his name right. No. Matt um, Mattingly, <laughs> and uh, and I and I wish I still had that note because I, as soon as I got back in back to Savannah because we didn't have cell phones back then, right? I found out that sure enough, big upset. Yeah, so so, did you immediately start working the phones and try and parlay yourself? No, no. <laughs> so were were you sort of how did how did you go from? Uh, you know the the driver, the, the the Chatham County driver to to a role on a formal role I don't, on I staff. I don't remember the the details, but I had just architecture. You have to go through an internship, so I just gotten my architectural license also in 1980. Okay. Um, and I just think at that point I, I, I was either bored or wasn't happy with the with where I was. Mm -hmm. And again, I don't remember whether they recruited me or they said we're looking for regional directors, and I raised my hand. But um, but it was it, it was a good fit mm -hmm. um, because I was down here, already knew him, had been involved with the campaign, um, and it was the, just a, the good timing for me to make a shift. Well, what was your region? How many? Well, first, how many regional directors were there? And there what were was four, uh, and okay. so my region went had Augusta down to Dublin. 
didn't have Macon that right. went down with uh, all the way down to Waycross, um, but I, which it included by day, which he had his Lloyd Darby, mm -hmm. uh, who had been one of his big supporters and finance guys. Um, so I had by day uh, and spent, and then you went you went out and to the different um, county seats. Mm -hmm. They would do a news press for for that. You know, the regional director Eric Johnson for you will be there at the courthouse for two hours if you want to come talk to him. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, and then places like Augusta, you'd go one, every once or twice a, uh, at one, one every week or every two weeks. And then, if it was a smaller county, then you'd go once a month. And mm -hmm. so, I spent a lot of time, obviously, on the road. And sometimes people would come in, and sometimes you'd just sure. sit there because you didn't have an iPhone to play with, so you. Yeah. Read the local newspaper or something. <laughs> um, but there was usually a Republican organization there. And, of course, since Reagan had won and since Mattingly had right. won, they would usually stop in so I could catch up on party stuff. And then when I got back to the office, which was in the federal courthouse downtown Savannah, um, rarely. But you knew you'd write a, you'd write a report that went okay. up to the senator and his staff of you know what happened this week. So who was who did you report to? Who who was your direct report? I think I reported to Bill Stewart, who was chief of staff at the okay. time, and I did this for two years, and then decided it was either move to Washington and advance the career there, or go back to architecture, and it just it would it clearly wasn't going to be a long term career, and it was better to get back to <laughs> to my chosen <laughs> career. So so you know, you've sort of done it, but so this was mainly. Constituent service, um, right? I would, I guess, we call them outreach, you know, yep. staffers. It, you know, sometimes days. you just talk politics, like the local. But then somebody would come in, and you know, they needed the Department of Ag issue or Social Security Veterans issue Affairs, or something like that. that. And then my job would be to funnel it to the appropriate staff mm -hmm. member that handled those issues. This and this, of so course, I didn't have to. Ha I didn't have to handle anything, which was kind of good. Right, but you you were their point of contact because again, this this is. Pre-internet days, you don't, you can't just right. submit the form. Yeah, I'd either call or or the or the report would give. Here's the issue, and here's the name and number and address for the person. Right. Okay. And then you trust it got done, you know, because you never well, heard back, you know. <laughs> well, that right. That that must have been. I guess that would be a frustrating part because. <laughs> did you ever have any uh, uh, the same people coming like? Eh. Yeah, in some in some of the areas, um, you, you'd have the same people come in, and you get to, and you get to know them. Yeah, and and the, the other benefit that 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 job did for me was, you know, I got to yeah, I could speak to farmers, to bankers, to you know, millionaires at the time, to people that were virtually homeless. So it was right. it gave me a whole variety of, of um, experiences of how to communicate, mm -hmm. how to talk to them. I had no agricultural background. You clearly begin to pick up on a lot of those issues. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, a, it was a great education that benefited my future political mm -hmm. career. Right. Did you ever travel to Washington as part of the job? Or, or I think was I there... went to Washington one time. Really? Uh, yep. Yeah. So there was, this wasn't there was no a, need. They probably didn't want to pay for me to go either. You know. To, well, well, you know. Mattingly Senator, is cheap. Senator Mattingly was famous for always sending money back to the right. Treasury for, right. for staff mm -hmm. costs. <laughs> so yeah, he, he probably hit the nail on the head. And I don't, there. I don't even think when I went to Washington, it was for him. I may have gone up there. My sister lives in Virginia, so I may okay. have gone up there to visit her. <laughs> he just dropped in. And what went by the Hard Office Building. So what was it like, um, you know, obviously you described it during the campaign, but what was your role when the senator would come back to your region, which was, of course, his home region, it, you know, on Brunswick St. Was, Simons? We had a, had a great relationship because I got to see him so much that he would fly into Savannah, I'd pick him up at the airport, drive him to St. Simons, pick him up, you know, the next week or whenever he was going back and bring him back up here. I'd also, I also had sort of house duty because... As you, houses are like boats. If you don't use them, they begin to fall apart. So there are mm -hmm. times that I'd go down there and, and flush the toilets and make sure there was <laughs> nobody had broken into the house. So sometimes I don't even go down there to check on the property when he wasn't there. Well, this is the, this is the behind the scenes stuff that yeah. our, our listeners and viewers need. need. So and the, I assume that was the East Beach house. That yeah, he that's right. Mm -hmm. So because, Carolyn, I assume, lived up in Washington mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. with the senator. 
So <laughs> the things you don't think about for, for Senate staff. <laughs> the, yeah, they weren't very often because they were usually back and forth, and he had he had two two daughters. Right, uh, right. So, but they weren't living at the house either. So, but every once in a while, I had to go down there just to check on the property, which right. you can understand. Sure, sure. <coughs> so, what kind of work-related events um, would you travel with the senator um, when he was here back in the back in your district? Well, they, you know, he, they would be they would be the call them town hall meetings. Mm -hmm. There would be fundraisers, um, so there'd be special um, events. There's one, and, and it's somewhere either in my rec in my record somewhere, there's a picture of the senator and Bill Stewart and I walking back down the Talmadge Bridge with a bolt in our hands from when the ship hit the old bridge. Right. And then he had begun the process and was able back in the days when you could do earmarks. I think the earmarks are back again. Earmarks are back. But he um, but he was able to to get the town much because it was at that point it, it, it got hit pretty hard. So well, it, there was no traffic. Well, I think so we had to start the, the process to do the Talmadge Bridge that's there now. And now they're talking about replacing it again because the ships are too tall. I, it's, well, I guess it's not as high as the Sydney Lanier Bridge. It, it that, doesn't you know, feel like that, it's that as, connects it Brunswick like and Jack. Like these new post Panama, post Panama ships are even higher than it was designed for. Post Panama ship. This is obviously not related, but what's a post Panama ship? That's the since they widened the Panama Canal, they now have bigger ships that are wider and higher ah. with the containers on them. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So they so they they still have to watch the tides when they come in to Savannah, and obviously that slows things down. Yeah. So, so yeah. that's so the name the of the DOT game. DOT is now doing a study on do, how do we replace it, or it, which is that might something include that could be a tunnel? Is like can that be something that would be dredged out, to, or, or is that you, no? Making the river deeper doesn't help the height it, of the water. Okay. <laughs> This is why Let's you're the, by a history this is major. why this is why you're the engineer and architect and I'm the historian. We just we did just finish deepening the river too. For okay. the same reason. Okay. Well there we go. Okay. I don't feel too bad now. <laughs> so who uh, you mentioned Bill Stewart, but who else was on the staff? Who were who were some of the other regional directors? Oh. Um, <laughs> you know, we I don't I don't remember. There's there, there was an attorney, and he's now an attorney in uh, West Georgia. The guy that kind of trained me, I can't remember his name. This, this again for the for the interview. This was 32 years ago, um, so I don't remember all, all the names. Sure, sure, uh, sure. We, we would we would connect and trade stories, and sometimes if there was a staff get together, we, we'd see them. But we really didn't deal with each other. All of us sort of. So you were vertical. mainly self-contained, right. 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 right? I guess if you were reporting to to, to yeah, Bill Stewart, you were going mm -hmm. straight up. You didn't report to a, a state. And they director. didn't have video calls, so if we even if you, so, you, <laughs> you know. we, we, it seems to me that we're, we're Sam sound. Sam Brewster, I think Sam Brewer, Sam Brewer, Sam Brewer was South Georgia, and I think he was hired before me, so he could help help me with what the job was going to be like. We. We're making this sound like it was the dark ages and, and not, you know, 30, 40 years ago. But, you know, such is technology these days, I suppose. Um, did you ever interact with, um, you know, Senator Nunn would have been the, the counter, Senator Mattingly's counterpart. Did you ever have any interaction with his staffs or anything like that on, on sort of he issues that overlap? He had staff in Savannah. She had an office. Uh, in the Capitol also, and there were there would be times if there was a special event that we it would both be at. Mm -hmm. um, so she was helpful, and of course at the staff level, there, there no and back then there was not nearly as partisanship as it is now. Sure. Anyway, so there was a great relationship among the staff and uh, helping each other out. In fact, the um, Kathleen, uh, Catherine Downs, and Jared. Downs are now married. They were, but they were Isaacson and Saxby Chamless, and they spent so much time together they're now married. <laughs> <laughs> As hap you know, that happens in politics. Mm -hmm. you know, you've got, what is it, James Carville? You're, you know, you're Louisiana mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and Mary Matlin. So, that that happens. Um, you sort of sort of touched on this obliquely, but is uh, did you ever have the urge to take a different role? on staff where you ever offered a different role 
Um, no, I really had the dream job because I was at home, right. um, and I saw the senator probably more than anybody who wasn't at the higher levels right. of, or of the other field staff. Um, because even when he was probably in Atlanta, I'm sure the chief of staff or the or the uh, the state director would would drive him around, and the regional directors were sort of outside of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm sure I saw him more than in the other regional staff. So I, I, I was in the right place and I wasn't really looking for a political career. I think I was just looking for a, some time off from architecture as I began my career about what is, you know, what I was going to do. So yeah, that, that gets me to the question, you know, 1983, you know, you're there for, for two years, which is, you know, mm -hmm. fairly common for, for, you know, turnover. Um, why, why did you decide to step away when you did? Did you have a job lined up? Well, no, you... I think, as I mentioned, I think it was just I got to the point of I needed to make a decision whether whether because I wanted to spend a career mm. as a regional director. Um, and so I made a decision whether I should try to move to Washington and sort of be a policy person or do something up there or go back to architecture. And that was a fairly easy decision because I mm. just didn't see a and although I ended up in, in a political career, right. I, I didn't see the, the staff level being the the, right. the path forward. Right. So, so you know, you, you step off staff, did, but did you you stayed in touch with the Senator sure, Mattingly and sure the did. staff? Sure did. Um, and, and still stay in touch. Mm -hmm. um, then, and, and then, you know, worked in the 86 campaign. Um, Although by that time, architectural career was going to take off, so I didn't spend as much time, but mm -hmm. was involved with helping him in the 86. Okay. What well, is in a similar sort of capacity, or, or were you a bit... bit uh... I, I don't remember whether I was a county chairman or a first district chairman, and at some point, um, I, was, I, was, um, I was county Republican chairman, and then I was... I was never state chairman, but I well, might have been a first district vice president. Uh, so you, I had a you were a, vice, you were a vice chair, yeah, so maybe a second. The vice chairs were broken down by region at yeah, that I, time. Yeah, I don't remember. I, um, and, I, and I was also, um, because of the, the political experience that I had, both with, the, and I was wire of the year in 1980, um, but then I ended up sort of running local campaigns. That's what I really fell in love with was managing campaigns, mm. county commission races, city council races, and then Jack Kingston right. and I stayed and I, and I ran his um, state house race where he beat a Democrat and was elected and that would have Is been... 84-ish? Yeah. I want to say it was 84. Yeah, because I'd, I'd left Mattingly staff, so it would have been so, yeah, the 84 that would election. Been right. he, beat, he beat an uh, um, incumbent Democrat and then uh, just continue to be involved. That was where I had my, my political release was, mm -hmm. was the party politics and managing, managing campaigns well, at the local level. What, what, what attracted you to that, that, that campaign management, which was very different from the constituent service? Um, I think that goes back to the architecture engineering planning. You got a plan. Back, you're going to implement the plan. We're talking about the old days. This was back when you had the um, the, the green and white striped computer sheets of who was registered. To <laughs> no vote, vote builders. And, and then you like printed that. out labels and put them on index cards, and then put them in walk order, and then did the did the did the streets. And you know, Jack would go down one side, and I'd go down one side, and then. Um, and then the, and the policy, I, you know, always like the policy and mm -hmm. trying to figure out how you're going to differentiate yourself. You know, because back then, the, the Republicans were really were the country club Republicans and the Democrats were more, you could argue they were more conservative than, than the Republicans. Yeah, definitely. Um, the because they, level, they were the rural, they, you know, they were the, the, the gun folks and the, far, and the rural folks and, and the power folks. Uh, the, the business community was... Democrat because the power was Democrat. Sure. So I, I was more, my whole politics was about a two-party system because mm -hmm. um, if I'd wanted the benefits of politics, I'd have been a Democrat. But I wanted a two-party system. Still think that's what helps, although now it's a whole different. <laughs> it's, it's a, it's a, <laughs> now it's a blood sport. Uh, well, I, but back then you could you could debate issues and hmm. you know t tax issues and, and policy and trade. Um, and speaking of trade, that was one of the, the funny stories. Was 
uh, Augusta was in my territory, and I had, I, I don't think I drove him up there. I think I met him up there mm -hmm. at the airport and, <clears throat> and drove him to a meeting on trade. And when, and the next day when I read the paper, they mentioned that the senator was driven away in a Honda, which was my personal car. So <laughs> I, I, learned, I don't know why they went well and picked done. on the poor staff guy, but, but I was driving a Honda Accord, and they made note of that in the newspaper. <laughs> hey, bar, better borrow Ford next to him. Yeah, Billy, Billy Morris is conservative. And Phil Kent. Phil Kent was the, like, the, oh, yeah. the uh, Columbia County uh, uh, or the editorial guy for the mm -hmm. for the Augusta papers. So well, we were talking. It was probably it's probably Phil that that did that. But, well, <laughs> well, before we started talking, we were talking about going to that uh, uh, that event with with Senator Thurmond, and, mm -hmm. and, and Phil Kent was on Senator Thurmond's staff yeah. for a, for a period of time. But yeah, that definitely sounds like <laughs> one of Phil's barbs that he would throw out. Um, yeah, you know, we were talking about you know the '86 campaign. Um, which which Mac was unsuccessful. Um, were you surprised that he wasn't able to win re-election? I, I, I don't I don't remember what where the polls were mm. at the time or not. It I was do, a bad I, year. What for I remember the issue. But. Yeah, it was the mid the mid second term mid second not good mid -term, yeah. yeah, which is always bad for the party in power. Um, I, I do remember that you know Mattingly had criticized. Um, White's, was it White Fowler running mm -hmm. against him? White yep. Fowler's yep. attendance record, mm -hmm. tremendously. Never showed up, never was there. And so he was very sensitive about missing votes, which meant he was in Washington yep. and not Georgia. I remember that was one of the criticisms in hindsight was that he probably should have been back in Georgia more and not worried about his voting attendance records. But that's the, you know, I, you know, I, think, I think most of it was the midterm sure. for a change and well, not his attendance or oh yeah and i think one of the newspaper it was probably the constitution and it was probably bill ship but I, i'm not i'm not sure about that dubbed him the senator from georgetown mm -hmm. because he stayed in washington which which of course you know he was there mm -hmm. you know, he had decided to you know as you said vote and you know do, do the job up there instead of campaigning but i actually went back and looked at the numbers last night he only lost by about 40,000 votes, 52 oh. to 48, which is really surprising in the 86, because uh, that class of 80 was really decimated. The Republican class of 80, the Senate mm -hmm. class was really decimated in, in 86. So I was actually surprised at how close it was. You think I hadn't written a dissertation on this and I would remember yeah. it, but that was a long time ago. <laughs> so you know, thinking back about, about Senator Mattingly, what do you think his accomplishments were his lasting accomplishments either policy wise or or politically and especially here in georgia for the party well the policy wise was was the protecting and if not growing the military uh, presence in georgia which has always sort of been a georgia right yeah. underpinning and he was able for, uh, with being on the in the majority party and on mil military construction with, with appropriations was able to maintain. I don't. I don't remember specific um, stuff. I think what well, yeah, Kings Bay was was Carter, but he probably mm. enhanced it. I don't know, remember whether Fleetsy was one of his. Um, the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center was one, but mm -hmm. I do. I do know that he was greatly involved in not just protecting, but enhancing and bring. You know, you bring in a unit here and it grows right. and it stays, and so that from a policy perspective, that was one of them. Politically, I think he just opened the door to show that Republicans can win, mm -hmm. because up until up until he won, you know, we would vote Republican for president and then Democrat everywhere sure. else. So now all of a sudden we had a had a U.S. senator, um, and that just opened the possibilities. Um, and of course, White Fowler was another one termer, mm -hmm. and ever that since then it's been hell. ever since then it's been Republican until last year or two years ago. So yeah, and hopefully that's a temporary pickup. <laughs> I was I was I was going to say well we can we can talk about that at, at, you know towards the end, um, and you've talked about this a little bit um, already. But how were you able to apply? You know, what what skills did you learn or did did you um, hone while working for Senator Mattingly that you were able to then use in your your, your later political career? Yeah. 
And that's a good question. And, and I, you know, if I could recommend everybody serve some time on political staff, they should. Because you, you see real people with real problems. Uh -huh. you, you, you have to learn to listen because, you know, they're, they're all different. Every situ everybody that walked in the door had a, had a different issue, different background, different needs. Um, so you, you, you learn that there are, you can't just sit back there and go, you know, pull up your own bootstraps, you know. You, you learn that there are real, real people and real issues out there. You learn to talk to a lot of different people. Um, and, you, and you also have to be very sensitive to the person you work for. You can't spout your opinion. Mm. You have to make sure that you know what the party line is and what the what the senator wants, or if you're in another staff position, what the, the you know they're the they're the person that's elected. They're the person that you're speaking for. So, you know some of these visits, the the reporters would show up. You know, sure. the, you know the little local weeklies were excited to have you know <laughs> somebody to talk to. Um, so you, you, there's a lot of skill sets that that you learn. Um, particularly when you're in the field, as opposed to being in Washington surrounded by that bubble. Right. There's a, this is more in the House. I don't know if there, there's a, a, an instance of this happening in the Senate, but members staffing up almost exclusively for comms, communications, messaging, mm -hmm. and, and not really having staff focusing on policy issues, constituent issues, do you think that is a, a symptom or, or a root cause of the sort of political issues that we have in Washington? Well, now, you know, now, nowadays you have all the, the social media and instantaneous, you know, this is, I want to know how you're going to vote on, on Roe v. Wade, you know. Right. Um, and, and you have to have an answer right now. You can't but the letter, and I, and I learned that's early in my legislative career. You know, mm. it's nice to have a letter, think about it, talk to your staff sure, about how sure. you want to respond, and then respond, and by the time the person gets the letter back, it's one or two weeks later. Now, if they don't get an answer in 24 hours, they're upset. Right. Um, so the, the, the communications is a whole lot different, uh, different now, and I think it's, a part of it's a problem because some people will jump on an issue like the stolen election. You know, instead of waiting, you know, several weeks and figuring out, well, maybe the election wasn't stolen. Now, all of a sudden, the temptation is, yeah, I got an answer, and this is the answer they want, and apparently it's true, and 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 you jump into it. So, right. it's a whole different day now. Right. Another thing I was I was thinking about that. Let me jump back to yeah. to the the constituent services that you mentioned. You know, typically you go to your congressman first because you know them a little bit better. They're closer to home. Their staff's more available. But back when Mattingly was elected, there wasn't. I mean, it was all Democrats. So Republicans mm -hmm. tended to come to us for issues that they thought, one, they were more they want to talk to a Republican, and two, they thought, well, maybe with the Reagan administration, he's got more more clout. Sure. So sure. you know, now we're back to the two. They're probably dealing going to their House member first, and the mm -hmm. senators more, you know, Supreme Court nominees and. You know, how, what, are we, what are we going to do about China and mm -hmm. and um, and the and the war in Ukraine? So, um, but back then it was more normal constituent services. Now it's probably mostly going to the congressman. It, it would be interesting. It would be interesting to 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 you know study that a bit and to see if if the partisan identification mm -hmm. of whether folks in you know Savannah who tend to be more democratic leaning go to a, a Senator Warnock or a Senator Ossoff instead of going to but you know, Carter, Congressman Carter, yeah. right. They, and That'd they, be interesting. They, they, well, and the senators are sort of hard, you know, they, they always get the complaint that we never see you. Because it's a big state. And it, half, we, the, we, half we, the state's inside the Beltway up in Atlanta. So, you know, you see, you do see your, con your congressman more. Maybe you run into him at the grocery store, but they're in, out and about more than at the at the local level than a U.S. senator. Sure, um, sure. And so it, it, they're, they're typically going to get more of the constituent um, requests. Right. So <laughs> so I guess if you had to choose, would you choose to be a staffer now or in 1981? No, definitely 1981. <laughs> definitely, no. Yeah. I, I, the social media has not helped politics. Uh, I... 
And, and, and the mainstream media. I mean, everybody's in silos now. You watch with the watch the only silo that says what you want to hear. Yeah, it's uh, much you know, harder now to watch in MSNBC and Fox News, and you know, there, well, and there are no Walter Cronkites out there. I mean, it's 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 a whole different environment, which is one yeah. of the reasons I think every that in redistricting is why everybody's so polarized. Hmm. In that, you know, you have safe Democratic seats, so you don't need to have say, yeah, you're crossover worried about primaries. safe Republican the, seats. The, 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 the Democrats are, the only hang helping Republicans these days are the Democrats have gone crazy. I mean, you're, you're, either, <laughs> way, you're either way left or right, right, way right because there are only a handful of competitive seats. Um, in the name of the game is mm -hmm. base turnout. That's right. And, get, the, get the nomination in a safe seat. You don't have to worry about the other side. And it, that doesn't, that's not... Good for the country. We're getting off track a little bit. Yeah, well, you I asked mean, about the old days. And the yeah. new, in the old days, you, you worked together. You were friends. I mean, Tip O'Neill and Ronald Reagan would go have a beer in the evening at the White House. You know, it, it's a different day now. Right now, now the, within the parties, their factions eating oh, yeah. each other up. Yeah. Oh, you know, I, I mentioned my dissertation earlier, and I'm glad I stopped in 2002 because I'm trying to. Project out and trying to write that chapter for you know, we. The last time you and I sat down and had an interview was 2017. Um, a few things have changed in Georgia politics mm. in the four and a half years mm. that that we we started talking. Uh, and, and you know, back then we didn't think it was going to be a very competitive state, yeah. um, or or that at least the Republicans would be, you know, in cruise control for a while. What do you think happened there to just to get off track a little bit? farther I, I, is it a single issue I, I is, it, is it the president you know, president trump no nah, well he, he didn't help um but i think even before trump mm -hmm. i mean you look back at the um gore versus bush you look back at uh, um at the kemp and, and abrams first race and how close that was mm -hmm. i mean it's George, we've as as republicans and democrats too know that georgia's demographically is changing sure. it, it's just it's getting um, more diverse. Um, uh, Atlanta is bigger. Um, the, 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 the urban areas are getting more and more Democrat, and um, rural areas are getting redistricted out of representation. So I mean, you're, it's. But I, it's. I still think it comes down to to the media that it is so hard for people to hear the multiple the complexities of the war in Ukraine or saving right. social security or immigration or whatever it is you're listening to people that are either influencing you or saying what you want to hear what you believe and everybody else is crazy or you know off track well and and the point you made earlier about you know like MSNBC and Fox News well you know, if the, you don't like the MSNBC line, you can always find you know, like the Young Turks or something like that that it, that mm -hmm. is more left. You know, on the right, there's a, you know what, One America News and, and Newsmax that are just, of course, both of those are in some legal trouble because of the the the, yeah. the election. But it, and, it, and everything. It, but now it's not even as much the media as as the well the TV media as it is Breitbart News. Uh, and, and um, which are usually some of the most drudge trend, and you trending know, you're, articles. You know, you're not on even Facebook. going. You're not even watching TV now. You're getting your news off of a, even a smaller and smaller. And the algorithms are designed right. to feed mm -hmm. you. And the Russians aren't helping. I mean, that's that's a fact. No, right. That's a fact. Yeah. You know, it's stir us up. Yeah, Make you us hate you, each other. You, you go, you go on on Twitter, and you can always tell because there's like a string of what six or eight different numbers behind a thing, and it's it's usually just like an incendiary comment to get people all stirred up and, and it's and it's across the spectrum on, on on that issue back to mattingly i don't even remember fundraising numbers um but they were minuscule compared to what's oh going, yeah even what's going on for now inflation, it's, it, and it's you and laughing. you got all your money from in state or you didn't get it i mean and now you get most of your money from out of state and it's hundreds of millions of dollars i, I can so it's all back to your point about comms i mean with that much money is being spent, you better be communicating a, the right message. <laughs> right, right. What you know, you mentioned you know out of state. It's, I can remember the 1980 campaign, um, Mattingly getting something like 
250000 $500,000 from the RNC, and mm -hmm. that being a game-changing, um, even mm -hmm. adjusted for inflation, that's not that much in the grand scheme of things. That's almost as much. It was in Herman Talmadge's raincoat, right? <laughs> <laughs> It was an overcoat, and, and, and you can go back and, and listen to some of the, the Talmadge staffers discuss the overcoats, <laughs> um, the overcoat issue, um, which we do not have. We do not have the overcoat in, in the, the Talmadge collection at the no, Russell don't. Library. It's, it's a great disappointment to us all. It would be a, a fantastic curio to, to, to have. Um, so you know, just just to, to to wrap up and to you know to circle back, is there anything else you know you we've we've gotten far afield, but is there anything else about your time working on the Senate staff that you you know now that you you wish you knew then in that role? No, I, I think it was I think it was the other way around. I mean, Mac Mattingly is was is a good decent man. There was no scandal ever connected nope. to him. Um, had had a wonderful wife who tragically died and has got a wonderful new wife. Um, two good kids, seemed to be a good father, you know. So it was it was nice to sort of cut your teeth with somebody who wasn't a drunk and, and wasn't chasing women and, and wasn't, you know, trying to benefit from their position and then winning in a big upset, you know. So you take what I learned from him and then ended up with a political career. I never thought I'd be in a majority in the legislature, much <laughs> less being pro tem or a, a gubernatorial candidate. But right. so it's, it, I mean, I think he inspired a, a lot of people, um, and some who stayed in Washington, like Bob Hurt, and, and some who went on to, um, I don't remember, you might be talking, whether they went on to congressional careers or state <laughs> legislative careers, um, you know, but. But he it, he inspired a lot of people to to stay involved, um, and that was the Reagan generation. And, mm -hmm. and then Newt Newt when was Newt elected? Newt seventy eight. All right, the two years beforehand. So um, and before that we had Ben Blackburn or somebody. So there was very few yeah. Republicans. <laughs> but when Mattingly won statewide, right, that opened the door and and gave the party folks hope. Right. As did Reagan. I mean, he was the optimist that, that sort of inspired that generation. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we've covered just about everything. And, um, you know, if you're interested in learning more about Mac Mattingly or Eric Johnson, um, their collections are open and available for research at the University of Georgia's Russell Library. And uh, thank you very much, sir, for your, for your time and, and, and your benefit of your, your knowledge and uh, Good to everything see, else. Good to see you again. Go yeah. dogs. Go dogs. <laughs>